In this video, I will show you how to use Mistral OCR to extract accurately data from PDF or images. So first, let's see what is an OCR and why to use Mistral OCR instead of others. So basically, an OCR will allow you to transform uh, data from PDF or images into usable data by an AI. So it could be in your workflows or anything. Uh, so let's see some examples. So let's say you have uh, an image or a low quality PDF like this and you want to extract information from it. Uh, you can use the OCR and have uh, a result like this. You can do this in multiple fields and languages. For example, uh, you can do this for math, uh, as you can see here. You can do this also for Hindi uh, and for uh, Arabic and a lot of other languages. Also, if you have a low quality image like this, you can transform it uh, into something looking like a PDF and uh, where information can be readable by an AI again. So now you understood what an OCR is capable of. Let's see why to use Mistral OCR. So you have a benchmark uh, here from a lot of models, Google, Microsoft, Gemini, uh, OpenAI, etc. And as you can see for different uh, purposes, so for math, multilingual, scan, tables, etc. Uh, Mistral OCR have the best score. Uh, it's also natively multilingual. So as you can see in Russian, French, uh, Hindi, uh, etc, etc. Mistral in most cases, I think it's in every cases, uh, have the best score. So that's why Mistral OCR is the best option for most use cases and also it's free. So let's go back on N8N to see how this is working. So we'll first test the workflow to see what we have in input and what we have in output for PDF and images. And then I will explain and go uh, note by note to explain how this is working and how you can use it. By the way, this template will be available in the description for free. Uh, you just have to download it and come here, import from file and upload it. Uh, so let's run this. So we'll first uh, try for PDF. So the example for the PDF is uh, this invoice. We'll try to retrieve from information and see how this is working. So let me run this. So let's open the final output. So as you can see, we're trying to retrieve the email, the phone and the VAT number. Uh, so here in the output, the client email is germany at cbp software. Let's verify this. So uh, as you can see here, this is the email. Uh, we have also uh, the phone number. So plus 4993, uh, plus 4993. And uh, we have the VAT number, GE1993. VAT number GE1993. So uh, the information are correct. Now let's test this for uh, the image. So let me uh, here change this. Uh, okay, save and let me test this. So here the test image uh, was this. So this is also an invoice. Uh, and it's more like an image. It's not like the, the first example that is uh, a PDF. Uh, so it's an image of the invoice. And we're trying to retrieve, let me check, client name, invoice date, and total price. Uh, so client name, John Doe, here. Um, invoice date, uh, 4 4 2014, here. And uh, total price 9315, uh, total price 9315. So we're good with examples. Now let's see how this is working and how you can use it in your workflows. So I run again uh, the PDF pass to review the input and output of each node. And then we'll do the same thing for the image path. As I said, the first three nodes are just here to uh, select if we want to use a PDF or an image for the OCR. So these are not mandatory, even useful for uh, your automation. You will just use uh, the first pass or the second pass, depending if you're parsing uh, an image or a PDF. So basically what you need to understand is if you're using the OCR like I'm using it here, you need to make your file, so your PDF or image accessible publicly. So you have multiple options uh, for this. 
You can have it as a public document on a website, for example, as I have it here. So basically, this is from a website from Google that I found. So you need to have the PDF directly accessible from the link like this. Or for an image is the same idea. As you can see, it's a .gpg. But the second option that is more convenient for most of people is to have a, a Google Drive file that is accessible from anyone. Here in orange, you will find a link that will explain you how to make uh, a Google Drive file accessible publicly. And then you will just have to import documents or PDF or images in this file and copy the link and give it to Mistral later. But here, the first step is just to download your file, so the PDF or image, and have it as a binary file. So I just did a simple uh, HTTP request with the link. And as you can see on the right side, we have a binary file. Then the second step is to upload this file uh, in Mistral. So this is why you want to have a public link to the file in the first step. Uh, so let's open this. As you can see on the left side, we have the binary file as an input. So this is an HTTP request. This is a post request because we upload a file. So we do the action. The URL of the request is uh, api.mistralai slash v1 slash files. After this, you just have to uh, use the predefined credential type Mistral Cloud API and uh, connect your account to it. So this is a free account. Uh, and we will send a body. The body content type is form data and the name of the first parameter is purpose and the value is OCR because if we go in the documentation, let's go on OCR with uploaded image. As you can see here, uh, the purpose is OCR and the second parameter type is an attained binary file. Uh, so the name is file and the input data field name is data because as you can see uh, here the second parameter is the file and normally you're done with uploading your file to mistral then the third step is to create a mistral url so it's called a sign url so let's open this here this is again an http request but this time this is a get request so you have the api mistral.ai uh, slash v1 slash files. You want to add the JSON ID. So the ID from the upload uh, just after this and have slash URL at the end. So again, for the authentication, you should be done with the previous step. Uh, this time we'll send a query parameter. So this is the uh, expiry. 24 and we send a header that is uh, application slash JSON and on the right side as you can see we have the Mistral uh, signed URL that we will use for the Mistral OCR. Uh, so let's go to the next step. This is again uh, an HTTP request so post one. We have uh, the URL that is API Mistral AI V1 OCR same uh, credential etc. Here we'll send a body, so a JSON, because in the documentation, if we go uh, here for get the OCR result, we'll use these parameters. So we have the model, Mistral OCR latest, and the document with the type and the URL, that is the signed URL we just created before. So let's go back here. We have a Mistral OCR latest document. Uh, document URL and uh, we have the JSON URL. Once you're done with this, as you can see on uh, the right side, you have the markdown. This is what we'll use uh, later to extract information uh, from the document. So basically this is the document, but in text format. Once you are here, you have your document that is translated as text that can be read it by an AI. So here we'll use a uh, uh, extract information uh, node that is here information extractor and we connect it to a model so you can use any model you want here and basically uh, the text will be uh, here the markdown that we have here so you will have uh, multiple markdown for each pages so you will need to select which one you want to use you can add multiple ones like this uh, if you want but here, every information I wanted uh, on the right side are in the first page. So this is okay. Um, 
you will select for the schema type from attribution description. You can also use a JSON, but this is basically uh, easier. On the attributes part, you will define which variable you want to retrieve data. Uh, so here I choose the client name, that's the string email for, of the client, and uh, I selected required, phone number, string, phone number of the client, and a VAT number string, the VAT number uh, again of the client. I could uh, make it required also. And on the right side, as you can see, we have all the information. After this, I can use uh, an edit field node. So I can have clearly all the information in one variable that I can use later in the automation. Uh, and basically when you have this, you're done. So let me run one more time the image pass and see what are the differences. You have the get request with the link and the binary file. Uh, again, you upload your image on uh, Mistral. So you have a post request with the same uh, link and you have the purpose OCR and the file data. Uh, you create Mistral signed URL with the same uh, URL here, uh, application.json, and you have uh, the URL as the output. To use the OCR, this is also uh, a post method with the same link. The type is image URL and the image URL is also the URL we've created before. So the signed URL in the output, you have some parameters like the markdown, uh, like before, but you have also the DPI that is the quality of the image, the height and the width. Uh, and basically after this, we do the same thing, but for different information, we have uh, the client name, string, invoice date, uh, that is a date and the price that is a number. And we use also an edit field at the end. Now you're done, you know how to use Mistral OCR efficiently for PDF and images. Let me know in the comments if you have any question regarding this workflow. Thank you for watching.